I feel like David Lynch and Angelo Badalamenti may have watched Taboo 5. <laughs> if we were to track down Jamie Gillis right now and asked him, oh, I got an incense lit, take two, and asked him in extremes, this new edit, this clean edit, is it the best in the world or is it the worst in the world? What do you think he'd say? It's the worst thing in the world. Hello everybody, I'm Jason from Barefoot. Welcome to Squeaky Clean Adult Films. Today we are going into Taboo 5. Johnny 5 is alive. That's something that no one ever said in the 80s. It's 1986. I lied to you in the edit for four where I said these first four are kind of like a cohesive unit. Same people. Yakety schmackety film talk. I lied. The first five. What I said about the first four, let's add five into there. They are all grouped together. We got Curdy directing. We got his wife, Helen, writing and producing. So good. I love this. This film was an hour and 54 minutes long. We got it down to 32. The clean version's 32 minutes, but think about it. Six minutes shy of being a two hour motion picture. That's a lot of exposition. An hour and a half that you will not be seeing, but 32 minutes that you will be seeing. I'll also be discussing the film in the front and in the back. Jamie Gillis and Joey Silvera do amazing jobs as the shrink and the playwright. Oh, and do you think that he's uh, trying to pay homage to a Francis Ford Coppola film? The one that Tom Waits did all the songs for? Well, of course. Colleen Brennan is the mom. She's Maureen or Mary. Mary is a troubled mom. Maureen is a crazy mom. We got a lot of strange things going on in this film. There's a horror score. There's like literally a horror score. Horror stings. They're amazing. I love them. I mean, listen to this. Nobody named Maureen here. I love Karen Summer. She has a great performance. Her or Colleen, I don't know. I might have to give it to Colleen because of the Maureen Mary thing. But Colleen Brennan and Karen Summer both did an exquisite job. She has her own theme song, and guess what we did? Oh, it's just so abruptly we smash cut right to it. Maureen! I don't think that's the tempo. Also, we rocked some jump cuts in that telephone pull through and scene. Portia Lynn, Amber Lynn, the Lynn sisters, they're not sisters. They're both beautiful, they're both talented, they're both strong women. Women, why can I speak today? They're both strong women, between Karen and Colleen and Portia and Amber. Representation, big time. I already gave Jamie and Joey props. And the whole cast did amazing. God, his name escapes me. Who's the guy from Sweet Alice? Kevin James. Enough verbal gobbledygook. Let's just watch the picture. Look at my little six second intro. And I tried to get creative with this one. I was like, hmm, should I use the same generic intro that's six seconds long? No, take two seconds, two seconds, and two seconds. Ooh, that'll make it original. Roll the clip. Roll the clip. I hope you like it. It is rated G. Roll the clip. Spend any time alone with any of them? Do any of them seem to especially like you or maybe have a schoolboy's crush on you? No. All right, Mary. I think we might be getting close to what's causing these blackouts. Oh, God, I hope so. <laughs> we'll uh, have to talk about that next week, Mary. In the meantime, I'd like you to think about what we discussed today.
wish you'd change your mind about being in my play. I want to stay home. Maybe play a house. Maybe have children. This play has potential. I don't want a stage. I want a home. Maybe friends over for dinner. I don't need no dinner parties. And I don't want to watch TV 10 hours a day. Do you remember when you saw that movie, One from the Heart? That character, that sense of adventure she had, and that touch of surrealism? Naomi, the part of Amanda is your One from the Heart. I thought I married an actress. You do what you want. No, Junior. Who is Maureen, anyway? Yeah, she's some friend of my ma's. Who are you going out with doing, Chuck? I'm just going with the guys, Ma. I worry about you a lot. I know. Don't worry, though. What are you doing? Are you just staying home tonight? Look at the month club and hot cocoa, I guess, for me. Hmm. You know, you should go up more often. Maybe meet someone. Have some fun. Enjoy yourself. Oh, Sean, I just... I just can't get into going out and having a good time since we lost Daddy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't worry about me. I'm just fine. Okay. See you later. Okay. Don't read the whole book. <laughs> good night. Junior, hi. Um, John just left a few minutes ago. Oh, good. Because we come to see you. We? Me and Donna. Oh, uh, how nice. Yeah. Well, how do you like her? Um, fine. Fine. Um, would you like to have a, have a seat? Uh, bring your young lady a soft drink, a Coke. Our young lady. Our young lady. I'll take a Coke. If you have one, Maureen. Uh, my name is Mary, not Maureen. My fantasy. Maureen. Well, which one of you delightful creatures wants to be next? You'll do. Come on in. Well, here's the set. What's your name? Lainey Jane. I'm Dalton. Nice to meet you. Uh, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself? Okay. Well, I studied drama for four years in college. And I did two seasons with Upstarts on the road. And I was the second female lead in Crisis at the Playhouse. Oh, very good. At the Playhouse, right. Um, now, you've read the script. I understand that cold readings are very difficult, so I just want you to take your time and do the best you can. I thought my life would pass in front of me. I thought Ed would hold me in his arms. Hello? Hi, Naomi. It's your father. I'm so glad you called, Dad. I was going to call you. Can you come over Sunday for dinner? Well, uh, I'll be happy to come over. Okay, if I bring a guest. All righty, Dad. Bye-bye. Hmm. 
one wants to see who's ever up next? That's me. about you, Dalton. I've wanted to meet you ever since I saw Cottonwood. Now, now, open up to page 110. Do I have to? I mean, I just hate cold readings. I mean, I'm not good at them. Come on. I always pictured... Picture. Oh, thanks. Picture. I always pictured myself, my, oh, my friend, and my family around me. Ed, holding me in his arms. I didn't care about how it happened. I didn't. I didn't care. Where are you from, Michigan? Detroit. Oh, that's sweet. It's, I didn't care. It's, it, put some feeling into it. I didn't care. Uh, OK. Thanks. I didn't care about how it happened. Oh, girls, girls, something's come up, but I want you to go back tomorrow, and I'll read you then, okay? <clears throat> the job's not taken. Trust me. Thanks. We need to talk, Sean, honey. I'm really concerned. Oh, not again, Mom. Yes, again, Mom. You know, I want you to go back to college, even if it means quitting your job. I can't do that. You know I need the money. I've got car payments, and for once, I feel like I'm making enough to take care of myself. I mean, I buy my own clothes and things. Hmm. I know, but I can help you. We've got enough, I mean, help you with your expenses, at least for a couple of years. You know, it was your father's dream for you to get your master's degree. I know what it meant to Dad, but this is for me. I've got to know that I can do it on my own. It's for me, Ma. Besides, I should be the one taking care of you, not the other way around. Mm. Don't worry, Mom. <sighs> All right. All right. We'll talk about it later. OK, good. See you later. Hello, Maureen? Nobody named Maureen here. Sean? Darling? Sean? I wanted to ask you, how come you never bring any girls around anymore? Well, I just never know how you're going to act. Act? Yeah. Every once in a while, you get kind of weird. Weird? Like now, Mom. I'm leaving. Why don't you go home, baby? I'll see you there later. You're cramping my style. Cramping your style? Cramping your style? I don't cramp anybody's style. If anything, you're cramping mine. So, why didn't you call me last night, Flynn? I waited around all night for you to call. He thinks he can stand me up. Treat me like dirt and I won't do anything about it. Why, you wouldn't stand me up, would you? No, not if you're asking. Well, then tell him that. Tell him you wouldn't stand me up. What do you think he is? God's gift to women? You shouldn't be begging him. Begging him? Who's begging him? Why didn't you call me last night, Flash? Answer me! You know, I have a really good mind to leave. 
why don't you leave? You don't mean that, Flynn. How come I've never seen you in here before, baby? Because maybe I've never been here before. Oh, yeah? Say, Satana, here comes your boyfriend. Why don't you go hang around him for a while and give me a break? If that's the way you feel, I will. looking all over for you. I figured I'd find you here. What are you, spying on? If you knew I'd be here, then how come you had to look all over for me? So, what do you want? I thought we were going to have dinner. I'm not hungry. So what else is new? I wish you wouldn't spend so much time here. You're only going to get in trouble coming here every night. Stop telling me what to do, where to go, and how to live my life. Honey, I'm not trying to tell you what to do. Just because you pay my rent doesn't mean you own me. Nobody owns me. No, I don't own you. I love you. Honey, I need some money for the bar tab. I'm really blushed. If you like, honey, we could just order some dinner in here. We don't have to go anywhere. What do you think? Don't even bother to take your coat off. You're leaving. Honey, what are you talking about? We just got here. Come here, stand up. Honey, you know how crazy I am about you, don't you? How long it's been since we've been together. And if you don't like it, you can take your rotten presents and go. I want to be alone. I'll make it up to you tomorrow. With you, it's always tomorrow. Tough. You're seeing someone tonight, aren't you? Well, who is it? Tell me who it is. I have a right to know. I'm not telling you anything. Because you're cheating on me, isn't it? You have to be in love with someone or it's not cheating. Besides, I really don't know why you're making such a big deal out of this. Stop quizzing me. You know, you drive me crazy with your lousy suspicions. Now get out of here. And if you don't get out of here, then I'm going to call somebody and have you thrown out of here. So get out of here. Hey, listen. Okay, it's pretty clear we don't have a future, so don't have to worry. You won't be seeing me anymore. Jeremy. You always make such a big fuss out of everything. Why are you always so serious? I'm telling you the truth. I have a headache. I just want to take a bath and go to bed. Alone. I'll see you tomorrow night. I promise. Just hope you're telling the truth.
Oh, Naomi. Hi, Daddy. You look as bad as I feel. Well, don't worry about me. What's the matter with you? Well, to make a short story shorter, I've left Dalton. I'm sorry. You sure you can't resolve things? I'm gonna forget I ever knew Dalton. Besides, it feels good to be home. Well, we have had our differences, but uh, maybe I've been a little too hard on you. Welcome home, daughter. Mm. Thanks, Daddy. And, uh, listen. Just as in uh, any separation, there's going to be uh, some emotional problems. So uh, this time, come and talk to me. I can help you. Well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, is Dr. Lodge there, please? Hello, Dr. Lodge? My name is Sean Casey. I need to talk to you about my mother. Did I ever tell you that uh, my father was a minister? No, you never did, Mary. Maureen does. <sighs> Maureen, I keep hearing that name. She haunts my sleep. She's in my dream. Dr. Lodge, who is Maureen? I believe that uh, she resides in your mind, Mary. I think when you have these blackouts that your other self, Maureen, takes over. You become a uh, different person with a different personality. Oh, that's it. That's impossible. I don't even believe in that kind of thing. Mary, uh... I'd, uh, I'd like to try an experiment. An experiment? What do you want me to do? I'd, uh, like to try and hypnotize you. I think we might be able to find Marine, stop the blackouts. Ah, oh, if you think so, Dr. Lodge, I would do anything to stop this nightmare. I want you to relax completely. Focus on something in the room. All you will hear is the sound of my voice. I'm going to count backwards from a hundred. As I go through each number, you will fall into a deeper and deeper sleep. One hundred. Ninety-nine. Ninety-eight. 97, 96, 79, 78, 77. Mary, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Are you comfortable? Yeah. Fine. All right, I want to talk to Maureen now. 
So you just relax. Maureen? Maureen? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, you know, Jeremy. I need to have time we had. You uh, could have come out any time Mary was here. <laughs> Why bother? Those sessions are so boring. Give me a break. So, uh, what should we talk about? Well, let's talk about you. Let's talk about the first time you took over, if you can remember that. Just kind of thought it was my uh, duty. No, to come out and save her. You'd say uh, Mary was inhibited. <laughs> inhibited? Oh, that's putting it mildly. Are you trying to shock me? Jerry Moran. Moran. Hello? I'm calling for Jerry Moran. Is this the right number? Yes. Well, may I speak to him, please? Well, Jerry isn't here right now. Well, who am I speaking to? Oh, this is Christine, Jerry's wife. Oh. Oh. Hey, Naomi, what's the matter? What did I do? I hate men. You don't mean me. I know you since you were a teenager. You can't mean me. Yes, I do. Oh, Clay. Of course I don't mean you. I'm just mad. I remember what a temper you had when you were a little kid. I did not. Yeah, you did. You and your sister were always fighting. You always took her side, too. You liked Robin better than me. Uh-huh. You were the one. You were always the one. Don't say that unless you mean it, Clay. I do mean it. I've watched it grow from a kid to a teenager, now into a beautiful woman. If you liked me so much, why didn't you let me know? I never had anything. It was always just a pool, man. No, I can't talk. I'll see you tomorrow. What are you doing to yourself? You've been coming home after dawn every day this week, looking emotionally drained. Maybe we should talk, huh? I know what I'm doing, Dad. It's gonna be okay. I take care of everybody else. Why can't I take care of my own daughter? Dad, it's just that everybody's so insensitive. Everybody uses everybody else. Nobody seems to care about anybody anymore. Daddy. That's okay. Really, I'll be all right. Listen, Flynn is going to be here in just a few minutes to pick me up. Please stop whining at me. I am not going to move in here with you. Honey, I wish you'd reconsider. Now think of the advantages. You don't have to worry about money. You could shop at all the best stores. I don't want your money. Is that all you ever think about, is money? It's not just the money. There's also love, security, companionship. So what's the big deal? What did you 
you call me over here for? I want you to take me away from here, Philander. You called me on the phone and told me you were in trouble. I can't let you do this. I can't let you leave with this man. You have nothing to say about it. He's not going to treat you right. You're doing this to make me jealous. I know you care for me. I did care for you. And you could have kept me if you would have just let me live my own life. Why don't we just uh, talk about this tomorrow? No. I want to talk about it right now. And then maybe you'll leave me alone. How does that make you feel? Do you really think you still love me, Jeremy? You animal. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm seeing, huh, Dad? Dalton would have loved it. I think you need some help. That's an understatement. I think you need a shrink. Maybe, maybe I could sit in the chair behind the desk and you could lie on the couch. Seriously, Dad. Selfish of me all those nights I stayed out. You cried a lot. I'm just sorry I wasn't able to help you. You just let them hurt you because you were lonely, baby. Loneliness. Loneliness is the worst thing in the world. I don't think there's anybody out there for me. Maybe there's no one out there for either of us right now. You have the two of us. Yeah. You'll find somebody to love. So will I. Someday. Nobody will love and care for you the way I do. And nobody will love and care for me the way you do. And that's what's beautiful. That's beautiful. Look at my little six second intro. Nope, doesn't cut the mustard. You gotta have me. I, I know a lot about cinema though, so that's the only reason why. There's a part of me that says, Ugh, no one wants to hear me talk about the movie before and after it. But then another part of me thinks, Ugh, well, I studied these films for a good portion of my life. I might as well talk a little bit about them. Kevin James, what an easy name to remember. I actually got into a whole topic with uh, one of y'all over Kevin James because somewhere the the chubby guy got linked to some Kevin James adult guy on IMDb. Mistake or a troll, who knows. It always makes me laugh on these old ones where I see uh, copyright things like Fredericks of Hollywood or The Natural. I wonder if that ever bites them in the end. Like, it, I guess it would have to be a, upon a re-release. There's one of the strangest pool scenes ever where the pool boy slash man, I love him, 
he confesses his love. You were always the one since you were a kid. Strange, like not cool strange. The only strange that's not cool. There's so much in the world of strange that's cool. That, not, not so much. Oh, let me tell you this real quick. You know how we're doing our extended um, October cult cinema? This does not count as this. This is a midweek drop. Sunday is going to be horror slash cult slash exploitation. You're gonna see me in your feed, probably not. Before then, Taboo 5, we're just, we're just trying to make some things. But regular Sunday, Sunday look for some oddball, weird, quirky horror cinema. Okay, thanks for watching. I will see you soon. Where are you from, Michigan? Detroit.